Hi, Bronwyn Lund from Bron Home Tours here. Uh, I'm just outside the town of Vestemarie, which is um, a little bit uh, east, even though it's west. It's called West M Maria, West St Maria Town, I guess you would translate it into English. But it's actually um, east of Rhone, but um, west in relation to where we are standing in the island. And uh, I'm actually making this film for Charmaine and Tanya in uh, Queensland because uh, their ancestor, Jens Hansen, actually lived on this farm, we believe. So I hope you enjoy the tour. I'm just filming the outside of the house today from the street because uh, I have actually been in and knocked on the door and asked the owner if uh, it would be possible to uh, film the inside of the house and uh, the area of the property because it's quite lovely. But uh, he wasn't very open to that idea, so of course we have to respect that. But there's lots of other very interesting uh, information about this house and the surrounding area that we can use to, uh, to make this actually quite a good film. Um, I'm going to walk down the street here and talk a little bit about Jens Hansen because although this is where we believed he we believe he was born um, it's we actually think that he went to school down here on uh, at the at, at the building in the far distance this is uh, cow territory so um, it's mainly dairy farming in this uh, area of the island and uh, the property that we're walking down towards is was actually the old school so the genealogist and I that have been uh, doing a little bit of research um, on the family uh, believe that um, he may have actually uh, gone to this school and his name was Jens Hansen but uh, when he uh, got to uh, Queensland in Australia he changed his name to James and uh, that happened a lot um, a lot of uh, Danes and particularly people from Bonholm they uh, emigrated from Bonholm and um, when they got to the US or Australia they uh, changed their names to sound more English uh, and uh, make the pronunciation easier and that also makes it a little bit tricky when you're trying to trace your ancestors um, if they've changed their name <coughs> and it was actually a pretty interesting process I haven't done a lot of genealogy research before but I find it very fascinating and um, <coughs> the uh, the gentleman in question Jens Hansen he is registered in the local church and uh, after we've had a look at the school the old school down here uh, we'll uh, we'll skip into town I'll drive into town it's not uh, it's not really walking distance or a walking tour and uh, we'll have a look inside the church where he was baptized and registered and um, so that's where we actually managed to find out the address because the address of where the family lived was uh, this farm at the time that he was born but when his older brother was born six years earlier we could see in the church records that the parents actually lived on a different farm so they were probably farm workers on a different farm at that time Later on in the story, we pick him up in another town called Oustemarie and there um, he's about 14 years old and uh, at that stage he actually uh, went over and worked on another farm in another town called Oustelars, which is where one of the round churches is. He spent two years working there and then he went back to Oustemarie and was registered there as a, um, as a, as a uh, servant boy and uh, then he disappears 
off the Bonholm records. So he disappears off of any parish records of the island. And so then um, my genealogist friend who, who, we, who we were researching this together, she believed that um, he probably joined the Navy which means that we then have to um, look at uh, Copenhagen records um, of the Navy at that time. So then um, that actually makes a lot of sense uh, because um, Charmaine and Tanya believe that he arrived on a boat as a sailor um, in Queensland at that end. So. Uh, I find it uh, very interesting to wonder what sort of a life he must have had in the 1800s um, emigrating from Copenhagen to uh, Queensland in Australia and being a sailor. So this building here over to our left is the old school. So it's actually where we believe Jens went to school with his probably older brother who probably by that stage being six years old was working on a farm and uh, he had a younger sister as well. So this was a school before it became a residence. Just turn around and go a little bit into the garden. It's a lovely half-timbered property. So I'll shut the camera off now and um, pick it up again in Vestemarie, the town that is nearby the farm. I just thought I would take the opportunity as I'm walking back towards the car to uh, film the approach towards the farm house. because it's a very lovely uh, approach, I think. see through the trees to our right the front yard of the house it's got a lovely big terrace on the front that obviously wouldn't have been part of the original building but sitting out there in the sunshine would be rather lovely we are standing just outside the town of uh, Vestmore West St Maria or West St Mary's um, and the church steeple you can see directly in front of us is where um, Jens Hansen was uh, baptised uh, in the early 1840s. So we need to just imagine um, this place about 170 years ago and uh, this was their street on the left hand side if we walked for about three kilometres to the left, we would come um, to the farmhouse. So they would uh, come in their horse and wagon, I guess, to go to church each Sunday and to bring children in for be, to be baptised. And uh, they would turn left here and uh, head up this hill into town. to do on this part of the tour is uh, walk down the main street of town, go inside the church and have a look at where Jens Hansen was baptised and then uh, just walk past uh, and down uh, the main street um, and actually out to my uh, 
grandmother-in-law, I guess you would call her, my husband's grandmother, maternal grandmother, also lives in this town. And this is actually quite interesting because this is where pathways start to cross. And uh, this town is uh, very close to my heart because it's where my mother-in-law grew up. I'm very happy for my mother-in-law, mother she's a great mother. And uh, her family um, were also farm workers working on the farm. But the farm that uh, they, um, they lived on was actually, when she was born, was actually over the other side of town to the right. So I might have a chat with the family about whether I should make a film about that. But uh, her grandparents were Swedish and they'd actually come over from Sweden uh, to get jobs here uh, on the island because Sweden uh, was a very difficult place to live in. Um, in the 1800s there was a lot of poverty. And Bornholm, the agricultural industry in the mid 1800s was actually booming. So, uh, so a lot of Swedes moved over and uh, worked on the farms here um, as farm workers. So we just uh, go back to uh, Jens Hansen and imagine his uh, family. Maybe they didn't have enough money for a horse and cart. Perhaps they walked into town. It's about a three and a half kilometre walk into town from the farmhouse. So it's not that, it's not that impossible in that day and age to have done that walk into town. So it's very interesting because this style of church is in a lot of the towns um, in Denmark across the whole country. It was kind of a, a uniform rebuilding of the church's project, massive project. And uh, one of these days I'll get up and do a film up in Klemska because the church up there is a very, very fine example of these stone churches that were built. And it's one of the biggest of, the st of, the, uh, of these uh, brownstone churches that have um, been built in the entire country. I just have to wait for a very still day to feel the film Klemska because it's on a hill <laughs> and it gets very windy. Even a slight breeze like today would it would be very windy. So we're coming to the back of the church now and uh, as with all of these uh, Bornholm churchyards, the uh, graveyard is immaculately kept. So we'll go in the gate and I'll just walk around the back of the church first and then uh, into the front of the church. And so besides uh, Jens Hansen being baptised in this church, quite a number of my um, in-laws, including my little nephew, have uh, been baptised uh, in this church. So it's quite a lot of family history for myself, as well as uh, Charmaine and Tanya. I 
feel a bit guilty walking on these beautifully raked paths and leaving uh, footprints behind. So you can see that the graveyard is immaculately kept like all churches on this island. It's interesting because Denmark still has the practice of tithing, of uh, paying 10% of your income to the church. It's not quite as high as that anymore, but uh, a percentage of a person's income automatically goes to the church unless you say otherwise. So you have to tell the tax department that you don't want to pay church taxes. And a lot of people continue to pay their church taxes because after all, the church is still there then for baptisms. Confirmation, confirmation's a very big event here in Denmark at about the age of 14 or 15. Many Danes will become confirmed in the church. And then there's another movement where they don't want to be confirmed, but they still want to celebrate the coming of age. It's a very important age, coming of age event um, confirmation here in Denmark. So they still want to celebrate the coming of age. So they will have something called a non-formation if they uh, aren't of the Christian religious persuasion or yeah, they just uh, want to have a good party and celebrate their coming of age at 14 or 15 because traditionally when one turned 14 or 15 in Denmark that was when you went out to work but not anymore they stay in school for a bit a bit longer now that's how a brain nation has to function so we'll go into the church now the lists of the priests once again from um, the Reformation all the way through until the modern day and that's very typical of um, many of the churches so we come into the church proper where thankfully there's some sunshine coming through the windows and uh, as you can see, it's an absolutely lovely parish church. And if you look up, the ceiling is quite impressive. There's a little bit more decoration in this church. It's not quite as Spartan Lutheran as the other churches we've visited. Many of the churches on the island are decorated by local artists who choose the colour schemes. And as you can see, this church is quite lovely. The pipe organ up the back. Most of the churches I've been in in Denmark, and I've been in many, <laughs> don't have a crucifix over the altar. And I think that's rather nice. A lot of the time, it's paintings celebrating the life of Jesus and uh, what he brought to um, his followers. So I think it's quite a nice way of celebrating the Christian faith rather than reminding us of the terrible way that he died. So that was a little visit inside the church and I'm just going to stand for a few seconds directly in front of the church because I forgot to do that as I was going in just so you can uh, enjoy the front of the church where the family would have come to celebrate the baptism of their newborn son Jens Hansen in, 18, in the early 1840s.
So we're just going to finish off the tour now by continuing out of the churchyard and uh, along the street past the old railway station and end up out the front of the supermarket which incidentally is across the road from my mother grandmother-in-law's house and I'm going to pop in and see if I can get a cup of tea from her before I drive back to Nexu. agricultural town and uh, it was it is probably about a one-day wagon journey from the main port of Vina. so uh, a lot of farmers in the surrounding areas would have brought their produce in um, to be traded here and then taken on to the port at Vina and uh, exported so that was the main reason for the existence of the town but then the other thing that happened in the early 1900s was uh, a railway was built and Vesta Marie was on the railway line and that actually meant that uh, wealth came that way as well, it came along the railway line um, and uh, infused the town with much needed finance. So they're the sort of the two main reasons why the town has existed. And uh, on our left here, this grey building, which is now incidentally the church, it's the free church on the island that have taken over the building, but uh, it was the railway. So this is actually where the railway line came through, and that's very common for a lot of the modern roads through the towns. Um, they have actually been the old uh, railway So this bit on the left as we walked past was the railway station. And then up ahead of us is uh, the supermarket. And I'm just going to end the tour up at those flags over there because then we'll just be across the road from my grandmother's house. Of the town of uh, Vestemarie. Uh, I hope uh, Charmaine and Tanya you enjoyed the tour and everybody else. I will be making more films of Bonholm so uh, please if you haven't already subscribe so that uh, you get notifications of uh, any new films that uh, I release about the island. This is Bronwyn Lund from Bronholm Tours signing off. Bye for now.